Hi everybody, welcome to the channel Crypto Ramble. This video is a way for me to better understand some of the concepts behind cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Beginning with the question, what is cryptography? In this video, I'm just going to mull over some of the information that I learned while doing research. Cryptography arose out of the need for people communicating to ensure that their message was both being received by the correct person and also received accurately, that is not having been tampered with. It's a way to secure communication across an insecure channel. Cryptography is a term most commonly used, but it's actually only one half of the equation, the other being cryptanalysis, and both coming under the term cryptology, which is a study of both cryptography and cryptanalysis. So cryptography specifically is a process of applying a formula or algorithm to a message so that it is indecipherable to everyone except the intended recipient. While I was thinking about this, I realized that the word indecipherable has the word cipher in it. And what do you know? Cipher is a term used to describe the resulting message after the original one or plain text has been scrambled. And so you get the cipher text. Cryptography involves encryption using an encryption algorithm, an algorithm being a set of rules that define a process applied to a given input in order to get a given output. And cryptanalysis is a method of deciphering the encrypted data by figuring out the pattern in the ciphertext that gives a clue as to what the original message was. So you could work backwards to figure out the original method applied to the original text. Decryption happens both at the recipient's end as it should, but it can also happen by an unwanted third party or an eavesdropper if they're able to figure out the plain text by analyzing the cipher and figuring out the pattern or somehow getting the key to decipher the text. I'm going to explain what the key is in a second. Encryption algorithms used to involve single letter substitution, but more modern versions use multiple alphabets depending on the order of the letter and also convert between letters and numbers. In the past, people would come up with encryption algorithms that they kept secret as they assumed keeping the method of encryption secure was the best way to make sure that the channel was secure. But counterintuitively, making the encryption algorithm public is the best way to ensure that it's secure because then everybody can know how likely it is to be broken because everybody's trying to break it. And so that wound up being the most secure method. Thinking that the code was secure just because of the people working on it who thought that it was secure resulted in even wars being lost. Nowadays, there are standardized algorithms that have not been broken over time. Because encryption formulas are standardized, there has to be a way to make sure that not anyone who knows the formula can get the message. The way this is solved is by the use of keys. Even though there's an encryption formula, there are different keys that define what the ciphertext is when applied to the plaintext using that formula, or what the plaintext is when applied to the ciphertext. That's encryption and decryption keys, respectively. So the encryption algorithm works with keys, and keys are the key to deciphering the text and the crux of the security. So the key itself has to be sent over a secure channel, say in person. Think of a one-time password. There is symmetric cryptography where the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt the message. And then there is asymmetric or public key encryption where there is both a public and a private key. Public and private keys work as a pair where someone could publish the public key so anyone can send a message to them specifically, but only that person with the private key is able to decrypt and read the message. Using a public and private key pair, the private key need not be shared with anyone. Multiple public keys can also be generated from the private key, which adds another layer of security. A private key can also be used for authentication purposes as a digital signature because a message can be encrypted with a private key as it is sent and then the receiver can verify that it is sent from the right person using that person's public key. It's important to note the use of hash functions in cryptography, although it's kind of detail, where a string of data can be output to a specified character length or hash. When signing with the private key by generating an encrypted message using that key, it's not the whole message that is actually verified, but a hash of the message. The hash or short version of the message will change whatever the message and is also different if signed by the sender who does not have the right private key. So the receiver can use the public key also to verify that the right private key signed the message by looking at the hash of that message. I hope this is not too confusing. 
When I talk about the signing with a private key and the person with the public key, making sure that it is from the right person. Remember, the key is what is used to encrypt or decrypt. So a message, though it may use the same encryption algorithm as another's, will not be the same if it uses a different key pair. As a side note, each encryption algorithm has a set number of keys and the security of the encryption algorithm is dependent on this as a hacker could attempt to decipher a message by just going through all the possible keys. But the encryption algorithms used by blockchain technologists such as Bitcoin have such a large amount of possible keys that it would take a really, really long time, basically infinite in human terms, to go through them all with current day computer processing power. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, as you will have figured out by now if you've started to use them, use public key encryption, where a wallet, which is simply a storage of data, is created having both a public key and a private key. If this is also confusing, you basically have to just keep your private key very safe and to yourself, but you can share your public key and send and receive funds by giving out the public key and only using the private key to access your wallet. I really like to think of cryptography as a solution to a problem. If I wanted to send a message to a specific person using this video format, for example, I would be aware that everyone watching and also the people who I don't want to see who take care of the medium I am using, that is YouTube or whatever channel this video ends up on, are not the people that I want to see the message, but they are able to listen. So I'm communicating across an open channel. Just thinking off the top of my head, maybe I could somehow scramble my message like so. However, the issue is that it cannot be random because you have to have a formula that can be applied in order to figure out what the original message was. A real world example of an insecure channel is when you're uploading or downloading packets of data over the internet, or maybe when using cell phone networks. We can encrypt data on our hard drives also, or phones using passwords. But data security goes beyond this to preventing social engineering as well, such as phishing emails. So the whole system has to be looked at and cryptography cannot only be relied upon. Cryptography solves the problem of communication over an insecure channel. And that is my understanding of what cryptography is. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.